Hi everyone, welcome to this quick tutorial video on how to add some diagonal bracing with connections using Revit 2019. So I'm using the very latest version of Revit 2019.1 and in this example I've got a little structural model with some cold rolled purlins already added. And what I want to do in this video is add in some diagonal bracing between the portal frame bays. And for this I'm going to use the brace tool, or BR for short. And this will place a diagonal member between the two portal frame bays. To do this, I can click the brace tool and I can try and pick some points on the model, but it's not really going to be very successful. So the best way to do this is if we look at the brace tool again, it will say that it's best to add it in a plan view or a framing elevation. So I'm going to click in to my west elevation and I'm going to add a brace between the base one and two. So I'm going to click brace. It's asking me to place the brace, but before that, I'm just going to set the reference plane. And the reference plane in this example is grid line E. And if I check that on floor plan, that is the grid line along the portal frame. So into my west elevation again, click brace. I'm going to use a circular hollow section. So I'm going to put in a CHS 76. I'm going to click a point at the very bottom of the grid and then I click a point close to the top. Now there is my haunch detail and I've got some cold rolled sleeve connections. So I'm just going to position the brace probably about there. If we have a look at this in my cold rolled 3D view, you will see that it has added in this beam. Now we could use a normal standard beam, but the advantage of using the brace is that I can actually just start to control the offsets and justification. So if I say a Z offset and I set that at 500, it will actually shift the brace up 500 millimeters above in the Z direction. And if I check it up here, I'm actually okay where I'm going in to this position. So as I said in the tutorial, I am gonna add a steel connection. So what I'm gonna do is select the, the column then the brace and then go to structure and select my connection tab. So it's put in a generic connection which I can select the drop down and you can see sometimes because I've got some custom connections it doesn't always give me the connection that I need but if you click edit type you can actually choose the type properties and you can actually choose which family you wish to use and sometimes I find this an easier way because you can actually just read the text. So I'm looking for a single tube brace gusset connection and then I click OK and that will simply add the gusset connection. Straight away I'm going to click modify parameters and we have a little lock. So the first thing I want to do is change the orientation of the gusset and I'm going to change that to perpendicular main. And you'll see when you switch it to perpendicular main it does a rather nice connection. Now it's up to you if you want to go through each of the individual connectors to change the parameters to change the layout. On this instance, I may want to change some of the layouts in here. And if we look at some of the special, you can change the end plate, end plate bolts. But if we go back and look in the gusset parameters and the brace T section, you can see that the cover shape is set to rectangular. I'm going to change mine to round and I'm going to put a 10 mil projection on it. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom and select this, then this structure connection again. I'm going to edit type and then from the type or from the family type, I'm going to change it to a single tube brace gusset. Select OK and again modify its parameters perpendicular to the main, the brace T, I'm going to say is round and I'm going to put a 10 mil projection on that again. So really easy, just use the standard brace tool, set your reference plane and then simply add the connections. So join me again soon for another tutorial. Hello.